1973, New York City. A bustling period in which psychology was evolving, consciousness questioned, and the rise of the fundamental question, what is language? And more specifically, how is it acquired? In 1973, as part of a Columbia University psychology experiment, the question that was asked was, if a chimpanzee separated at two weeks old from his birth mother and placed into a human home, was raised as a human child, could it be taught American Sign Language? And can it be proven that chimps can use and acquire language like humans? The test subject, Nim Chimsky, named after researcher Noam Chomsky, who claimed only humans can acquire language and are wired for it. As chimps can't speak because they lack neural control of their vocal tract muscles, it was decided that sign language would be used. The researcher, Herbert Terrace. Herb, as he was called, a curious linguist and psychologist on a mission to disprove Noam Chomsky. Nim was born at the Institute for Primate Studies in Norman, Oklahoma, and at the age of two weeks old, he was chosen by researchers for the experiment. Nim was ripped from his mother's arms and placed into a New York family living on the Upper West Side. There he was a part of the family under the maternal wing of Stephanie Lafarge, who cared for Nim and even breastfed him. His childhood involved lots of playing in a chaotic environment, although lack of structure for a planned and controlled experiment. Nim was expected to learn how to sign in that environment. Stephanie Lafarge was not trained in teaching sign language and it was felt that the environment was not beneficial for Nim's advancement. In phase one of the experiment, while living on the Upper West Side, Nim quickly picked up some of the basic signs, such as hug, drink and play, indicating non-declarative memory storage. As none of the members of the household had any knowledge in teaching sign language, the environment was deemed unsuitable for Nim's advancement. Phase 2 of the experiment resulted after a decision to focus more on Nim's sign language education. Nim was relocated to upstate New York living in a mansion and given another mother figure, who was responsible for journaling progress and developing teaching methodologies. The aim of this phase was for Nim to start combining words into structured sentences. Nim's classes took place in a classroom at Columbia University, described as a dungeon. It was deemed that this phase was unsuccessful and Nim showed clear bodily signs of boredom and disinterest. Instead of showing willingness to learn proper communication, he used already retained sign knowledge and memory to signal his need to use the bathroom as he quickly figured this meant bringing him out of the classroom. The third phase of the experiment resulted after a stagnation in Nim signing progress and multiple episodes of anger, attack and uncontrollability. Nim was sent back to the original laboratory at the age of five, a highly primitive, violent, prison-like environment. Nim was abruptly removed from his human life. This was the first time since birth surrounded by other chimpanzees, and he grew aggressive and deeply depressed. At this point, the experiment was over and no more data was collected. His carers and terrors had abandoned him. He struggled and did not socialize with the other chimpanzees, trapped between the human world and the animal world. Nim was sold to Lemsip for experimental medicine and testing. Interestingly enough, during his time at Lemsip, it was recorded that Nim still used sign language to communicate with the scientists and did indeed teach other chimpanzees to sign to a certain level. After various legal battles and media representation, Nim was, for the last time, relocated to a place called Black Beauty, a rehabilitation center for traumatized and abused animals. At this point, Nim was finally able to enjoy life and felt secure enough to engage with his own species and regain his lively personality. Shortcomings in the experiment were abundant. In 1973, consensus of animal consciousness had not yet been adequately defined or even studied. There was limited attention and consideration to how certain events could affect Nim and his inner life, as well as his sign language progression. Nim was taken out of his natural environment and exposed to unnatural and man-made influences. His consciousness may have been tampered with, making it unable to answer whether or not Nim showed higher levels of consciousness. 
The experiment focused on Im's ability to use grammar and create grammatically correct sentences to communicate. This was disproved as Terrace stated in his conclusion that Nim was unable to grammatically construct sentences and use ASL. Furthermore, there was no clear definition of when Nim learned a specific sign and what constituted learning. We know that chimps have the ability to speak and communicate using their own language and may have higher levels of consciousness not yet understood by humans. The experiment was not structured properly and taken seriously. The test subject was tampered with and there was a lack of objectivity in data measurement and conclusion creation. On the same note, there appeared to be unclear protocol as to when Nim was treated as a chimpanzee or a human infant. Numerous ethical issues, such as the treatment and imprisonment of chimpanzees for experimentation, as well as lack of safety and protocol for human caretakers were apparent throughout the experiment. To conclude the experiment, Teres stated that Nim did not appropriately use language and when he did, he used it to acquire food and other natural needs. Although this makes sense, don't humans do the same to an extent? Maybe humans and chimps are similar after all, regardless if they share the same language. <laughs>